Welcome everyone. This, I'm Patrice from the City Clerk's, City Clerk's Office. Uh, this is the Los Angeles Unified School District Board of Education Compensation Review Committee meeting. Uh, committee members present today are Danielle Forbes, Alice Goff, Mark Henderson, Efren Martinez, Julie Menendez, Lupita Sanchez Cornejo, and Dolores Spears, seven members present and a quorum. Uh, we will begin with item number one, which is a presentation by the Chief Legislative Analyst and City Attorney relative to the committee purpose and intent pursuant to Los Angeles City Charter Section 804 and Historical Committee information. <clears throat> sure. For item number one, we do have uh, public comment cards. Uh, will Caprice Young, Monica Ratliff, Come up first, please. Either way. Oh, here, join us. <laughs> I guess I'm first because I was on the, uh, the school board longer ago. Um, I served on the LAUSD school board from 99 until 2003 and um, lived the whole life juggle thing. Um, at the time that I got elected to the school board, I was um, uh, a senior professional at IBM. And um, the review that I had gotten from LAUSD's general counsel was, well, you don't have to quit your job because you can just recuse yourself from uh, anything related to IBM. And since I had never worked on anything government or education, um, that sounded good to me. Um, and a couple of months into my term, we discovered that that was actually not the case, and I had to quit my job at IBM. Um, and that was a month after I had just given birth to my second child and had another child while I was on the school board. Um, so it was very difficult to manage working full time, which I had to do, and being a school board member and having at that three children. Um, the biggest issue um, actually was that in order to be a school board, you want to be able to be available to your constituents, to be able to hear what their opinions are, and that takes time. It takes actually sitting on school sites with parents and teachers and families. And this is a huge school district. In terms of the amount of time we have for governance, um, it's microscopic because we have one school board for hundreds of thousands of kids. And so on a per kid basis, actually LAUSD spends one of the least amounts of time um, in its governance process. The other thing is that as a school board member, all of your conflicts of interest accrue to your spouse as well. So, and since LAUSD does business with pretty much everybody in Los Angeles in one way or another, um, I couldn't work for Staples. My husband couldn't work for Taco Bell. Um, I mean, there really was a lot of difficulty putting it all together, and I wanted to be 100% present for the kids, and I couldn't be. Um, but at a higher salary level, I would have been able to be just a board member and a mom, and I would have been a much better board member. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Monica Ratliff, and I am the BD6 board member, so that's in the Valley. And I pretty much am going to echo Caprice's comments. Um, when I started as a board member, I was a teacher, and so I looked back on my W-2s. I'd roughly made about $69,500. Um, so I had to take a, a pay cut because you can't be a, a teacher in your own district. And you also pretty much can't be a teacher and be a board member, because how are you going to be a teacher and on Tuesdays of every week be at the LA Unified School District. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so I took a huge pay cut, in my opinion. It was about $25,000 a year. Um, and so I did it for the first two years because I don't think you can actually be an effective school board member without knowing your district and without knowing the divisions. And it, at a $13 billion organization, which is what LA Unified is, you need time to get to know the divisions. You need to know what's happening in the divisions. You get um, regular informatives and emails. And as Caprice said, actually, the stakeholders want you to be available. 
They expect to be able to meet you. They expect to be able to send you an email and you respond. Um, and so I did end, end up becoming a part-time board member for the last two years, um, which actually in the end didn't impact my salary as much because the reality is in order to be able to still do the job, I took a 60% position um, teaching in another district. And, uh, and so I was looking at my W-2s and roughly I've made, let's say, about $6,000 more um, the, the, the year uh, that I first started that. So y you really do need to be able to do this full time. I think it's more akin to the Board of Public Works because I think when you look at it, you're dealing with contracts, you're dealing with facilities issues, and stakeholders expect you to read the contracts and they expect you to read the informatives and you cannot do that part time effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more card, um, Mr. Puppet. Okay, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so as a puppet, I come to a lot of these meetings at City Hall. Oh, you know, that's because they're forgetting to pay their power bill here, so just ignore that. The lights sometimes go out. So, in this bankrupt city building, yes, it's going down. We need people to make enough money on the board to avoid being bribed. That's right. That's what the lady's saying. You look at Steve Zimmer, who just got his ass kicked out. I went, well, he, he went. We went to him to try to stop a tax payment for laptops. And nearly got arrested, yes. And then later it turned out to be an ethics violation. Then you got Tamar Galatson, another pig. <coughs> yes. That takes and tries to file phony criminal charges against people that try to stop corruption at LAUSD. She got her ass kicked out too. Now we have a 4-3 majority in favor of charter schools. So we want the payment for these people increased to $210,000 a year plus benefits. That way, they'll make enough money not to have to steal anymore. Yay! Nobody will be able to come to them and bribe them in the parking lot anymore. I like that, don't you? Especially when they're in charge of nine and a half billion dollars of our money. Don't you think they deserve to be paid accordingly? Of course. If you don't pay them enough, they'll become a Steve Zimmer, they'll become a Tamar Galatson. And Miss Monica, we don't want another Steve and another Tamar, do we? No. Make it 200000 a year. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, and welcome to the first meeting of the LAUSD Compensation Committee. My name is Harith Trevetti. I'm with the City Attorney's Office, and I'll be staffing the committee on behalf of the City Attorney's Office. Also staffing the committee, um, and with us today are Karen Kalfayan of the Chief Legislative Analyst's Office, and also Roy Morales of that office, Patrice Lattimore of the Clerk's Office, Paul Gerard from the CAO, and we'll also be receiving assistance from Jefferson Crane of the LAUSD Board of Education. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time this morning or this afternoon to discuss the purpose, history, and basic responsibilities of the committee, much of which you already know, but for the benefit of those here and the public listening and for the record, we'd like to, to go over those briefly with you. I'll start with some background uh, and uh, basics of the charter provision at issue here. Uh, Karen uh, Kalfayan will discuss some of the actions that the committee took in previous iterations in 2007 and 2012. Um, first, Measure L was passed by the voters of the school district in 2007. Um, and that set the, uh, the charter provisions into the Los Angeles City Charter that established this committee. Many people ask why and how the Los Angeles City Charter governs LAUSD uh, governance, and it's because the California Constitution provides that the Los Angeles City Charter can govern certain aspects of the Board of Education. 
specifically Article 9 and Section 16A of the Constitution authorizes the voters of the district to amend the Los Angeles City Charter to provide for matters such as the terms for which members are elected, the uh, times of their election, and also for their compensation. And that last part is what brings us here today. So pursuant to that constitutional authority, the voters of the district in March of 2007 uh, approved an amendment to the city charter that accomplished three basic reforms. First, it instituted term limits for board members. Second, it uh, created or established campaign finance rules for the elections of board members. And third, it established the LAUSD Compensation Committee to review and set the salary and benefits for the board members every five years. Um, this measure, Measure L, followed a lengthy period of study in the city and the school district regarding governance issues um, and was a result of the, the President's Joint Commission on LAUSD Governance Reform. At the time Measure L was passed, and one of the, one of the acknowledgments of the, of the LAUSD um, uh, President's Commission, Joint Commission on LAUSD Governance, was that the workload of the Board of Education was significant and perhaps the, um, the uh, compensation wasn't commensurate to that workload. At the time Measure L was passed, the compensation for board members was $2,000 per month as set by state law. Charter Section 804 is the provision in our charter that uh, provides for the Compensation Committee. And I said it, as I said, it provides that the committee shall convene once every five years to set the salary and benefits for the members. It requires the committee, and, and a copy of, the, of this charter amendment was provided to you all. Uh, importantly, it um, charges the committee with mm -hmm considering the following elements and, uh, and factors when setting the salary and benefits. You should consider the amount of time that the board members serve directly or indirectly related to the performance of their duties. You should consider the amount of salary and benefits received by other elected and appointed officers and officials in the state with comparable responsibilities. Also the salary and benefits received by the judiciary and by individuals in the private sector, educational sector. Section 804 also provides that after considering all the above factors, the committee shall adopt a resolution by a majority vote to set the salary and benefits of the LAUSD board. The committee makes the final decision. Uh, the committee's final decision is not sent for ratification to the council or to the Board of Education. It's, it rests in your hands. The committee is the deadline under Charter Section 804 for its responsibilities. It must discharge its duties by adopting a resolution within 90 days of the date that the council confirmed your appointments. Council confirmed your appointments on May 3rd of this, of this year, so your deadline to act is August 1st of this year. And finally, Section 804 also provides that in the years that the committee doesn't meet, the Board of Education can adjust the salary and benefits for board members, but can only increase that by 2% annually at a maximum. I'm going to turn it over to Karen to discuss uh, some of the history of the previous actions and then um, we'll also invite uh, Jefferson Crane from the LAUSD to come up and talk about uh, and provide insights based on his experience and expertise in the area. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just talk a little bit about what um, the, the committees have done in the past. This is the third uh, um, time this, this committee, ha committee has convened, the first in 2007 following passage of Measure L, and then again in 2012, and of course this is the, the, third, the third time. Um, as uh, Mr. Trevetti said, that in 2007 that followed some extensive discussion from the, the Joint Commission, the, the President's Joint Commission on LAUSD governance. And at that time, um, when the, uh, the committee got together, um, it, it basically looked looked at two added two options for the for payment one had to do with whether there was a, a, a member was employed uh, had outside employment and one whether they, there was no outside employment so if there was outside employment it was a lower uh, a lower rate based on the state um, the the state rate and there was a higher rate if, if the board members had no outside employment and I believe it was set at a teacher a, a teacher's salary uh, at the time, and then uh, the benefits were set at the of those who were the same as those were that were received by employees of the district. In uh, 2012, the, this committee made no changes, so those uh, so those, the compensation stayed the same. And now, in 2017, you have the option of of keeping it the same, making changes, 
and and basically that's as uh, was stated this that's the determination of this committee it doesn't go for ratification I think uh, that the conclusion of your work the re resolution is prepared the resolution usually provides um, a little, the background of, of what the committee has done presents findings and then establishes the compensation and benefits uh, that would go to the um, board members and then I think that that's just transmitted to the to the city clerk just for, for record keeping purposes uh, but no ratification is required so that's kind of in a nutshell what was done in the last couple of rounds of this and and uh, what you decide to do and how you want, what, what information that you want, um, the, the meetings that you have, that's really up to you to determine. And um, Karen, I think. I have, oh. I have a question. Can I ask? Karen, you said the level that was set at $2,000 a month was set by the state. What was that linked to? How did, how did the $2,000 figure? You know, I don't know where it came from originally. Okay, because I have a few questions for Mr. Crane, yeah, so I can ask yeah. him. Okay. And, and that was adjusted. I think there was some adjustment and where it's now around 20, I think I have that somewhere. I think it's around 26,000. And then uh, the, um, the, the other amount is about 46,000 46, currently. Maybe we can ask uh, Mr. Crane to come okay. up yeah. and provide his insights and experience and answer questions that you may have. Thank you both. Thanks for the opportunity. My name is Jefferson Crane, and I'm the executive officer of the board. I'm one of three direct reports to the Board of Education. There's me, there's the inspector general, and then there's the school superintendent, the district superintendent. Uh, I, all, I oversee all administrative matters related to the operation of the Board of Education and its staff. Over the past 16 years, I've worked with 27 board members and nine superintendents. Uh, board members are elected from geographic districts, and each district has approximately 600,000 residents. Each board district has over 100 kindergarten through 12th grade schools. Uh, the size of a board district is bigger than a city council district, it's bigger than an assembly district, it's bigger than a state senate district, it's slightly smaller or modestly smaller than a LA County Board of Supervisors district. Uh, by law, the board members must approve every transaction made by the district. That is every purchase, every salary check, and every personnel transaction. Uh, I brought a prop. This is a board meeting book for a single meeting. It's approximately 500 pages, double-sided. There are, in this one, 46, 46 tabs. Each 46 items, they'll vote on about two-thirds of the items, and some will be carried over to the next meeting. They have to go through this because they have to approve each of these items at each meeting in order for the district to conduct the business, and that's required by the California Education Code. Uh, they have to make an informed decision about each of those items, and so they really do take their job seriously, and they read through the items, they look through it, they ask questions. Um, they're held accountable for this. They have to balance their oversight role with the knowledge that micromanagement will constrict the district staff's ability to make decisions utilizing the district staff experience. They do this by delegating a great deal of authority to the superintendent. So some of these items are what we call by the numbers. they will be personnel transactions. Really it's 20, 30,000 transactions at any meeting. That's people that leave the district, come to the district, are hired, have a salary increase, go on a leave. It's a page and a half. That's not where they spend their time. They spend their time on things of more substance. Uh, they do this because ultimately they're accountable to the constituents, the people that vote, the residents of their district. Uh, in my years, I've learned that most board members cannot treat this position as a part-time job. I've been there since 1995. Uh, being a board member becomes a full-time job, and sometimes they're able to take on an additional job. Sometimes they have to. They have no other option in their lives. They have to figure this out. Uh, for the last 10 years, the compensation has been a major issue for a majority of the board members I have worked with. 
The decision to run for office is often weighed against what will happen in their lives if they interrupt their careers to do this work. Under the current scenario, many who choose to run are retired LAUSD teachers or administrators. They have that independent source of income, which is they've worked for the district 30 years and now they're receiving a retirement check. Um, for a moment, I'd ask you to imagine having a young child or a college age child and wondering how you can take a significant pay cut to do this work. Uh, it's an interruption if they're even working for the district. If you were a district teacher, somehow you take this job and your retirement program is interrupted. You're possibly sacrificing health benefits, not while you're in as a board member, but in your future years. Um, retirement plans suffer, college savings may never recover if that's what you're aiming to do. Uh, mortgages, other financial commitments may never recover. It's, it's an issue that weighs on the board members for a significant number of them because of the pressures of just living here in Los Angeles. Um, your work in this committee is related to having the best possible people apply for this job. You'll have to balance that, but the, really that is the goal. You want to be able to say to the electorate here in Los Angeles that the best possible people are taking on this job. It can't be constricted by how much money they're going to make or what their plans are, and so you've been asked to find that balance. What will help this community have the best possible people available to take on this job? Forgetting running for office and the exposure that that entails, they're making decisions, thinking about what am I going to do for the next four years? How am I going to make this all work? Um, I'll answer the question about where does that $2,000 come from? It's, it's in the state ed code. Uh, the ed code, this is the second largest district in the nation. It's the largest district with an electric school board in the nation. It is the largest district in California. The ed code specifies how much each board member will pay based on the number of students in the district. So there's a ed code provision that says any district over 400,000 students will receive $2,000 a month if they attend all the meetings. And then there's a little A letter that says the board members themselves can vote to raise annually that compensation by 5% in any year. They've done that, I believe, twice. I think it was for 5% and 2%, and this is in the last 20 years. Uh, the Ed Code also, uh, when Gray Davis was governor, uh, the Assembly and the State Senate approved a measure to double the compensation for all school board members. So a small school district, you might imagine, having 128 students, those board members receive $50 a month. It goes up doubling, basically, as you grow in attendance until you get to the 400,000. Um, the vetoed by Gray Davis was a provision to double that. So the board members, just before this commission started uh, uh, 2007, had an opportunity to make $48,000 a year. Um, Gray Davis vetoed that, and so it remained at the 24,000. Interestingly, in what the committee came up with in 2007, we could have had a scenario where that um, legislation passed, doubling the salary to $48,000, and you would have had a situation if you worked, you received more money than if you didn't work, because the $48,000 would have been more than the $45,000. Um, I'm not sure that it's good that that didn't pass, but it, it would have made for an interesting discussion about really what was the intention of the committee. Um, any other questions? I'd be happy to. Yes, Mr. Crane, thank you for that. I do have one question. In regards to uh, the board being able to vote their own increase in moving forward, if an increase in the salary was actually proposed by this committee, would they still have the ability to then increase their? That increase is totally related to the Ed Code $24,000 a month, if they attend all the meetings. If they don't attend all the meetings of the board, 
we prorate their salary and we reduce it for any month that, uh, based on how many meetings they missed and how many meetings they attended. But no, uh, this committee completely decides that. This committee in 2007, if they had done away with the EDCO provision, which they're absolutely able to do, you are absolutely able to do, uh, that's where the, the raise is included. All right. Let me, let me supplement that by uh, the charter does provide that in years that the committee doesn't meet, the uh, Board of Education can increase the salary and benefits that are set by this committee by 2% at okay. maximum each year. So that yes. is the adjustment they can make annually when the, in the interim five years. Right. The second question I had, thank you for that, is, a, is in regards to the retirement of the board members. So are they part of CalPERS or? No, the board members are not part of CalPERS or CalSTRS. Even if they came from a... Uh, employment that had one of those categories, they must be part of the CalPAR system. It's a public employee alternative retirement system. It's a, it functions more like an annuity, right. so they have money deducted from their paycheck for that each month, uh, but it comes back as a, uh, a, a total amount based on their, uh, uh, what was, withheld from them. But, but their services interrupted from wherever they were working. Their, their services definitely interrupted, and we've had that in many cases. Ms. Ratliff behind me that didn't mention that her four years away from her teaching salary also is four years that she won't earn towards a retirement in CalSTRS, um, which I, I believe is a significant problem fixed by the state and the CalSTRS, not by us, but I mean, it they're working for the district. It seems right that those years should be credited somehow towards district uh, even after their service, but so far not allowed. Thank you. And should, just for clarity, um, while this committee deals with salaries and benefits, uh, it does not extend to the, the pension benefits that, are, uh, that yeah, a, a board state. member would meet. Yes. I have one other question. Somebody mentioned, I think Ms. Ratliff mentioned that, or Ms. Caprice in regards to the spouse having some impact or being impacted by the person wanting to run and be elected to the board, how is that, I mean, what's that determination so? If well, that's related to the conflict of interest issues. It's Government Code 1090, which says that um, uh, income of cohabitants it is, has to be considered on the Form 700s where you're disclosing. Right. And so we would have a board member, depending on, you know, there's a, a spot Ms. Young mentioned that recusal isn't good enough for some issues. Right. Um, and so we have had some board members who have significant holdings and their only recourse is to sell them in order to actually function as a board member. We have very few that have modest holdings. And, and manage that. We've had a, uh, we, uh, in the last meeting, we have a board member who owns some Ford's motor company stock. And so he leaves the room so the board can buy five vehicles from a Ford dealer. Thank you. So this initial, oh, please go ahead. I have a couple questions for Mr. Crane. Um, the board members have staff. Do their staff members earn more than a Board member? Almost every one of them. Um, and then one of the, I don't know, Ms. Young or um, Ms. Ratliff talked about the number of hours that you take in terms of preparing to read a 500-page agenda and having community meetings, parent meetings. Roughly how many hours do you know, uh, based on your experience, do they spend a, a week? Yeah, that was my question. Well, so we... For the first committee, we actually provided a board member, or maybe two board member calendars of their time delineated about uh, delineating pr preparation for meetings, participating in meetings, and doing uh, constituent meetings and school site visits. There is no one who doesn't do this well more than 40 hours a week. Uh, this is a significant undertaking, and they all approach it exactly that way. Um, it's nothing casual about this. Uh, if mm -hmm. you're not available, people are uh, asking where are you and, and are you not actually representing them. The preparation for the meetings, uh, I, I meet with uh, usually a couple of board members, sometimes more, sometimes less, con uh, considering the, the, the composition of the board. And 
just to casually run through this book very quickly takes two hours. And they do that. They attend uh, staff briefings. They have to speak to their own staff about this. They have to actually attend the meetings, which work out to regular meetings and committee meetings approximately for each of them about 15 to 20 hours in a month. Um, they're uh, spending, every one of them, the equivalent of a full-time job at this. Uh, it's, there seems to be no other way, and we have had very few that have tried to do it, expending less time. Uh, the real way to expend less time is to care less about what's passing in front of them, provide less service to their constituents. I mean, it says, I'm, I'm, we've had every once in a while a board member say, I'm not visiting any schools. Sorry. Don't invite me to International Food Day. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about any issues or problems. That's not my job. I'm not doing it. Um, it's possible to say those things, but I'm not sure that's the representative that we want. Thank you. For, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, just for a point of uh, information, um, will we have these, uh, the same panel available for us uh, later on in other meetings uh, to request additional information, whether that be um, uh, uh, more details on what they're what they're speaking of? Um, based on the um, agenda items, um, then the appropriate panel will be available. Okay. Just because I saw that the rest of the, of the agenda, uh, what it contains, so thank you. I, I'll just mention at the last meeting, so I think all three of our offices provided a great deal of information and we will try to answer any question that you want to pose. In the last, especially in the first iteration, uh, we provided information about salaries, salaries in the district, comparable salaries in the state, uh, comparable salaries in the nation. Um, we want to make sure that you have all the information you'd like to have in order to make an informed decision. That's actually what was going to be my next question. I, you mentioned we're the largest uh, elected board in the state. In the nation. In the nation. But I want to get a feel for what the compensation is for the largest board, whether they're appointed and kind of see where we rank based on, mm -hmm. on those boards. That's important. Uh, we'll be able to provide Thank that. you. And, and, and I'll just mention, when you think about all of this and how much, I would guess right now the board members are receiving approximately 50 cents per student, if you allocated it that way. Our, all, all of our offices run, my office, uh, we have 49 staff. Um, we run for about $4 per student in the district. I mean, it's a kind of efficient. The district gets approximately $12,000 for uh, each student. Uh, our share is small for providing the oversight. And Susie, members, when we get to item five, um, under item five, um, you can go into further discussion as to items, information you'd like to come back um, as it relates to um, future agenda items that you'd like to see. Um, I have a question. And uh, the legals could tell me whether it's appropriate or not. You can stop me. Uh, Mr. Crane, uh, what would you like to see the compensation be? So you, you're going to stop me? No, I'm not. Here, <laughs> you could ask him that question, of course. He's, he's uh, tell, you know, providing information at the request of the committee. So. Yeah, so uh, in, in many ways, I, it may be a little early to answer that question. Um, I'd like to help you get where you'd like to go on what you as a representative group think is appropriate. Um, I do know that, uh, as I said, board members right now struggle in order to do this. It makes a big difference about who takes this job, how they do their job. And you really need to take that into consideration. And then we can walk down the path of finding really an appropriate salary, compensation that you believe will allow us, as I said, the real secret here is getting the best possible people to do this. I have a quick question. So, so from what I gather, there's like a two-tier payment or, or compensation? Yes. Um, may I ask how much it is for the those who have a full-time job and are doing this part-time and then is it 48000 or so, 46000 So uh, if you have no other outside employment, a 
but this does allow you to have a trust fund, a retirement fund, or a, a you know a spouse who works, or any of those things. If you have no other outside employment, you receive approximately forty-six thousand dollars a year. Okay. If you have any outside employment, and the any is really any. Um, nobody is reporting to me their babysitting money, but you know, any outside employment, you're paid approximately twenty-six thousand dollars a year. Okay. Any outside employment, anything is anything. 20, I, any the only exception that I believe has been made is a nonprofit board that receives some sort of stipend for participating in the, the nonprofit. And, and I think they have had, had to have that position before they were on the board. I, I defer to the legal minds, but that came up 20, uh, 10 years ago. They must really be committed. 26. And then um, obviously they can't be, someone can't be forced to not have outside employment. Or, or can you dictate? that I only want to be a part-time employee. So the, the answer is no. I mean, no one can dictate whether someone takes a job or leaves a job, mm -hmm. uh, but the parameters of the job put some requirements in it. One, you can't take a job for anything that has a conflict of interest that will mm -hmm. keep you from being able to do your job. Um, the hours required to do this job preclude a lot of outside employment. It's a big struggle for those that try to keep their outside employment. Ms. Ratliff mentioned that she has essentially a 60% job with the school district. Um, that's because at least one day a week uh, she needs to be doing board business at, uh, with the district. Um, and I think uh, given her druthers, she might say 60% is more than I'm juggling a lot and it's really hard to really feel that I'm doing uh, the best service that I can possibly give to the district, but you know they have to take that into consideration. Um, as I said, no one really does this job as a part-time job. What they do is they do this job as a full-time job, and they look for a part-time job to supplement it. And, and even that's a big struggle to find that job. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just the way that, we, that the, the time is organized today is to have this initial presentation. Um, staff from the CLA, city attorney, CAO, and uh, Jeff from the LAUSD are available throughout the course of your deliberations as you go forward to provide information back to you. The first item was a background item. We'll obviously revisit these issues as you go forward. We're going to spend some time discussing conflicts of interest and ethics in the second item that pertains to this committee and then move on from there to setting up the, the procedures for this committee. So we'll go to item two. Okay. Item two is a presentation by the city attorney relative to California open government laws, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Public Records Act, and conflict of interest. And there are, uh, oh, actually, excuse me, for item number one, there was a late uh, card. Janethea Hutley Hayes should have submitted a card for item one. Thank you. Good evening, members of the committee. My name is Janethea Hutley Hayes, and currently I serve as a senior policy dep for um, Supervisor Sheila Kuehl in the third district. But in another um, iteration of my life, I was a member of the Los Angeles uh, School Board. And I am here actually to speak in favor of raising compensation for school board members. I am sure at one point in time, the being on a school board was looked at as a part-time job and it was looked at as simply governance but from my perspective uh, first of all we'd all have to buy into one thing the first thing that I think we'd have to buy into when we're talking about people serving on a school board is that we all in this room do believe that educating the next generation of Americans should be the most important thing and it should be the most important endeavor that we're engaged in uh, we live in a democracy you cannot have a democracy if you don't have a literate society. 
if you don't have people who understand how a democracy works. The second thing that's important to understand is that a school board member actually wears three hats. There is a one hat of providing outstanding educational experiences for young people. The other side of that hat is understanding that the Los Angeles Unified School District is probably the second largest employer in Los Angeles County. And the third hat that a school board member um, actually wears is being able to look at contracts and understand the complexity of the Los Angeles Unified School District being the largest consumer of goods and services in the region. In order to do all three of those things and to do them well, and also to meet all of the things that you claim that you're going to do as an elected official, that cannot be done part-time. There isn't a way for you to be able to discharge all of those duties and to govern what I consider to be probably one of the largest public corporations with a budget that is actually bigger than the cities, not as big as the counties, but you're talking about seven people who have the responsibility of being governance folk for a public corporation, for that is what uh, the Los Angeles Unified School District is. And to believe that that is possible, I'm really familiar with the, with the limit. So I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> but, but thank I'm you. familiar with thank it having you been a school much. board member. I'm familiar thank with it having finger. been on the staff. You finish. You'd, you'd have to give everything. I love having you been finish on the staff thought, of an elected official. Pardon? I would love you to finish your thought, though. Okay. Well, my other, the only other part of my thought is that you really and truly need to be looking for people who have a skill set that allows them to understand governing is different from running the school district. The governance structure is one thing. Running the school district is something that the superintendent does. And so you need people that actually have a certain skill set that understands the role of a governance board and what that actually means in terms of what is it that you do for your constituents, what is it that you do when you're using public tax dollars, because that's what the, Unified, the Los Angeles Unified School District is using, it's public money. And so you really have to be prepared. In my particular case, I actually did have to leave a full-time job um, in order to just discharge the duties in the way that I thought they needed to be discharged when I became a member of the school board. I was employed, and after six months, I realized that there was no way that I could actually discharge my duties as a member of the second largest school district in the country and also discharge duties having a full-time job. It Thank just you. was something that was simply not possible. Thank All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For item two, we have one speaker card. Mr. Puppet, uh, you, you'll have a total of five minutes for public comment. You've um, so far used two minutes, no. so you have three minutes remaining. That wasn't on the agenda. It doesn't need to be on the agenda. It's council rules. No, it's not on the agenda. This is, this, is, this is a special committee. This isn't a city council meeting. It's a committee that was formed by the city council. All right. Well, here again, this is what a bar complaint looks like. And this is what I'm filing against Deputy City Attorney Hugo Rossiter. Do you really want to receive legal advice from these people at the city attorney's office? I'd caution you. They have a lot of problems in the city attorney's office. They have a, if any of you are attorneys, they have a set of rules called the ethics rules. Eh, I found 14 violations today. So what I would recommend the first thing this panel does, uh, retain outside counsel. Because you're going to be making a big decision on salaries for a board that oversees billions of dollars. And you don't want to wind up in federal court in a deposition later asking why you made your decision. These jackasses don't know anything about the law. The only thing they know about is that the city's bankrupt. So I think the reason these, these salaries are so low for these commi commission members in LAUSD is so they're more capable of being bribed. I really believe that. If you pay them enough money, they can be independent. They don't have to listen 
to things in their ear. They don't have to worry about the mortgage payment. They can make independent, solid decisions. If they're compensated high enough to what they should be compensated, when they're not making enough money and they've got to fight for babysitters, a bribe in the parking lot, a bribe is very, very susceptible. And that's the way the unions, that's the way the contractors like it. That's why they want these people paid so low. You've got to get that in your head. That's why you need outside counsel. And if she's going to limit me to that bullshit five-minute thing, but before I wrap it up, get outside counsel. Don't trust these motherfuckers. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Renee Stottle, and I'm also from the City Attorney's Office. I'm going to talk to you very briefly, uh, uh, give you a very brief overview of the Brown Act, which you are now subject to, as well as uh, conflict of interest and ethical requirements, because you're now considered city officials. And um, Harit's also going to jump in and talk to you a little bit about the Public Records Act and whenever he thinks that I'm missing something. So, um, as I mentioned, you are subject to the Brown, your body is subject to the Brown Act. You've been, you're, it was created by the city charter and you're considered a local legislative body. Um, and as, as such, um, various rules apply. Um, all meetings of, of your committee have to be publicly noticed. There must be an agenda and there has to be an opportunity for public participation, um, including public comment on uh, agenda items. Also, the, one, of the, one of the frequent issues that bodies um, have, to have to, I don't want to say maneuver, but have to consider is um, a meeting. So a meeting is generally when a majority of the members are gathered at the same time and place to uh, consider or deliberate on matters within its jurisdiction. So, but it's also the Brown, and it's the Brown, it's the State Brown Act. It not only um, applies when you're there together in the same room, but the Brown Act also prohibits having what they call serial meetings outside of a publicly noticed uh, uh, and agendized meeting. So that means that if you have a conversations with your seven member committee, you can only speak to outside of a public meeting three members and that includes um, potentially one of those one member talking to another member talking to another member. So if you're going to have, you need to be very cautious about having meetings outside of here. Um, but you can potentially do it, but you have to make sure that the other people that you're talking to aren't talking to uh, other members such that a majority of the members have now talked about the matters that you're talking about here, which is compensation for the LAUSD board members. And that's the main point that I want to get across. And that only that applies not only to um, you um, talking, but it includes e you know, use of technological devices such as email or um, intermediary such as another person to pass messages along. Um, if you have questions, as you might, um, in between meetings, we would suggest that you direct the questions to Patrice so she can make sure that um, she finds the right, pers right staff person to answer those questions. Yes? So does that question have to be sent to all of the other board members at the same, the committee members at the same time? You should not do that because that would constitute, that could constitute a serial meeting. And do not reply, you know, if someone does, you know, so it, I, I don't reply all, yeah. <laughs> send it directly to Patricia. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. <clears throat> the second issue I was going to talk to you about, uh, just very briefly, is conflicts of interest and in ethics and financial disclosure. Um, today you should have received an email um, 
it's actually from the Ethics Commission mm -hmm. asking you to complete your Statement of Economic Interest, Form 700. Um, now that you're, you're on a committee and your decision is to set the compensation of LAUSD board members, that's a government decision. And because you're making a final government decision, you're considered to be a public official. Um, so financial disclosure um, is part of that. And, and while you're only, um, you have a very short tenure, um, 90 days, um, that doesn't mean that these rules don't apply during that time. Um, and so you'll need to complete your Form 700, which is, discloses um, real, est real estate investments and income. And, um, and there's also an additional form that you have to complete, which is a city requirement that relates to having interest in what we call a restricted source, which are essentially people who have interests that are pending before you. Um, the Ethics Commission can answer any questions that you have about completing the, these forms or, and the ethics issues, which I'll just touch about on briefly. Um, but also under state law, you're subject to the Political Reform Act um, as public officials and subject to the conflict of interest requirements. Because your uh, duties are fairly narrow, um, the conflicts of interest that you encounter here should be fairly small. Um, you, basically, you are barred from participating in, a, in the decision if you or your, your, your spouse would have a financial interest in the decision that you're making. So that's really the only conflict that you would have here. I don't, unless you were to look at hiring other staff, then that might be an issue too. But that's the main conflict of interest issue you would have here. Um, from an ethics standpoint, um, you're considered, you are subject to the city's ethics ordinance also. Both the state law and the city's law have gift restrictions. Um, and so you, during the time that you were here, have gift restrictions. Um, they have, there are limits. Um, and, um, $100 from restricted sources and 470, which is a state limit from people within your disclosure category. There are a lot of exceptions though and the rules are kind of complex. So if you have any questions about gifts, I would suggest that you call the Ethics Commission. Um, if you have questions about conflicts, call our office, the city attorney's office. There's another restriction. I uh, gave you all um, copies of the city official handbook, which lists, has everything in it. Um, one of the other restrictions for city commissioners, which you would be, are considered is you may not attempt to influence a city decision uh, for compensation while you are a commissioner. So sometimes that has been an issue and I just wanted to point that one out. Um, and that's basically all I was gonna say. And if you have specific questions that are individual to you, I would recommend that you talk to us offline as opposed to here at the public setting. Um, but if you have a general question, uh, can you just repeat that last one? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, com city commissioners are barred from attempting to influence city decisions for, if they're doing so for compensation. Personal compensation? compensation? Um, if you're being paid to to um, essentially lobby the city, um, then that's an issue. During, during, that time, during that time frame. Uh, the uh, last set of um, government laws that we wanted to discuss was quickly about the Public Records Act. The uh, 
California Public Rec Records Act, which many of you may be familiar with, with your you know, other government service, is, um, is a broad law that provides the public access to um, the records and writings of this committee or any other public agency. So uh, just to be aware that the work you do for this commission in terms of the materials you have and any communications you have that are related to the work of this commission with each other or with staff, they may be subject to the Public Records Act. And um, if we receive Public Records Act requests, we'll work with you to respond to those as, 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 uh, as appropriate. Um, again, this includes not just handouts and written materials, but also emails and other communications. So just be aware of that. And again, as Renee mentioned, individual questions on conflicts of interest or on ethics or um, any of these matters, we're here to advise you on that. We do that routinely for commissioners and elected officials in our office or in, in the city. Um, ethics Commission is available to advise on any of the ethics matters as well. They routinely advise individual commissioners on their um, questions on gifts and, and lobbying and other matters like that. So we'll be happy to provide those services to you as well. You're going to be you. here, one of you, till the end of the, the meeting? Sure, yes. I need to talk to one of you off. Okay, okay. no problem. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number three is introduction of members and election of officers. There's a speaker card, Mr. Puppet. We have one minute remaining. So as you can see, she's already violating the Brown Act because there is no five-minute limit. See, they lie to you the minute you walk in this room, and they're going to keep lying to you and keep lying to you and keep lying to you. You need outside counsel. You're asking about conflict of interest. You need, you need a competent attorney. The, the, these, these douchebags are not the ones to answer those questions. A competent attorney, under, and you can, you can authorize that and make the city pay for outside counsel. That's what you need. So again, you're going to take this position. Give these people 200,000 a year. That because you do it, you're going to stop the bribery. You're going to stop the outside contracts. You're going to stop the conflicts of interest. And these guys, four, three, now majority, are going to be doing a lot of charter school business. It's a great school board we got coming in. Pay these people the right money. If you don't, the scandals, the fraud, the corruption will continue, and these kids are going to get a crappy education like they do now. That's all I have to say. So, um, so just since you just heard from the city attorney regarding conflict of interest, I just wanted to make clear my term is ending at the end of this month, June 30th. So this does not, if you do increase compensation, which I'm a supportive of, it does not impact me. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the transparency. <laughs> so for this item, uh, we will begin with uh, introductions of members. And then followed by uh, entertain motions for um, positions of chair uh, and vice chair. So we'll begin with um, Ms. Forbes, if you would like to uh, begin the introductions. Good evening. My name is Danielle Forbes. I'm with the uh, Writers Guild of America West. And I'm not sure what other information you'd like. <laughs> Whatever information you'd like to share about yourself. Ms. Goff? That's, that's all I got. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Alice Goff. I am, look, I'm a, I'm a retired city employee. I officially retired from the city March 31st. Um, thank you. But I am still working because I'm completing my term in office as the president of AFSCME District Council 36, and that term expires this October, October of 2017. I'm also the treasurer of AFSCME Local 3090, and that term expires October of 2018. So until that time, I'm still around. I'm still working, um, supposedly half-time, but that doesn't happen. It's, it's not a part-time job being a local union officer. And I just look forward to working with all of my colleagues on this committee. This is exciting. Mr. Henderson? Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Marky Henderson, a proud product of LAUSD, a class of 86, Narvon High School. Uh, I always believe in uh, we should always do some service, so I'm actually looking forward to this opportunity to actually discuss this issue. This is an important issue. I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues. My mentor here, Ms. Goff, is uh, make sure that I do the right thing and make sure I work hard. So I'm here to work hard and actually uh, share and learn and work with my colleagues, so I'm honored to be here. Good evening, Efra Martinez uh, with the Florence Firestone Wano Park Chamber of Commerce in the unincorporated part of LA County. 
been there for approximately, what is it, uh, 15 years now uh, as the executive director there. Uh, and I look forward to working with my colleagues. Good evening, my name is Julie Menendez. I have three children in LAUSD. I've taken a sabbatical from teaching and um, I'm also honored to have this position to have been chosen with, this is a big decision that has to you know, be made and it's a pleasure to meet everyone that I'll be working with. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lupita Sanchez Cornejo. I'm delighted to um, be joining and serving this commission with you all. I want to thank everyone who attended tonight, um, especially the former LAUSD and current school board members. Uh, certainly their, their insight is very much appreciated and hopefully they will return at a later session. Uh, I am employed by AT&T. I am part of the Greater LA Region External Affairs Director. I've been with the company for 17 years. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, with the City of Los Angeles Mayor's Office. Uh, I've served on prop, with, yes, with a school board, former school board member Caprice and we worked together under uh, that mayor. Uh, I also served on LAUSD Prop BB Oversight Committee um, about 17 years ago, 16 years ago. I am a product of LAUSD. I grew up in the southeast uh, in Bell, was a lifelong resident, went to uh, Woodlawn Elementary School in Bell, Nimitz Junior High School in Huntington Park, and uh, Bell High School in the city of Bell. I am now a mom of uh, two kids who are LAUSD students, um, and so I'm very uh, passionate about this issue. I think it's a very important issue. Uh, to attract the right candidates and make sure um, uh, that we're uh, taking care of everyone and uh, have the best people with the best interest for the some 700,000 students that we will be um, representing here. And um, I live in the city of Los Angeles in a community called Porter Ranch. Thank you. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. My name is Dolores Spears. And uh, I, too, worked for AT&T <laughs> years ago. Um, I left there in 1992 and went to the Christopher Commission, worked, worked with them for a while. And I worked as a business agent for um, uh, AFSCME, District Council 36, for a number of years. We negotiated. Um, contracts for the LA City employees, which included salary, compensation, and benefits. Um, and all total, as a business rep, I, I have, I've had 32, 34 years uh, experience in that area. I worked previously with AT&T as a um, shop steward um, and worked my way up to where I retired from. I'm currently um, board member, executive committee board member of my neighborhood council, uh, UNNC. I am also a deputy commissioner with the county of civil marriages. So I marry folks. Anybody want to get married, see me after. <laughs> and now currently on this uh, commission. And uh, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone at this time. Uh, we'll entertain any motions for the position of chair. Scott? I'd like to um, nominate Ms. Lupita Sanchez Cornejo. Um, just, I think. Well, okay. No, no speeches, just a nominee. Is there a second to the motion? I would second that. Okay. Are there any other motions? Okay, at this time we'll vote on the motion to, um, uh, to appoint um, Ms. Lupita Sanchez Cornejo to the position of chair. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any, and all opposed? Okay. Ms. Sanchez Cornejo. Well, here? thank you, everyone. I look forward to uh, <laughs> to working with you, and uh, <laughs> uh, appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> okay. At this time, we'll entertain motions for the position of vice chair. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. 
Any other motions? Okay, so we'll vote on the motion to appoint. Yes, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, we'll vote on the motion to appoint uh, Mr. Martinez as uh, vice chair. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Mr. Efron Martinez is the vice chair of the committee. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to item number four. Item number four is discussion and adoption of regular committee meeting schedule. Uh, so as has been mentioned previously, the committee um, has 90 days, um, and that's 90 days from the date that council con confirmed the committee appointments. And so that brings uh, the committee to August 1st, 2017. So uh, I believe historically the committee has met uh, three or four times, um, roughly every other week or so. Um, so, um, at this time, we can discuss um, uh, how often do you like to meet, what days and times uh, you would like to meet? I have a, I have a question. Yes. In, in the past, how many times have they met? What, what was the norm? I believe, uh, Mr. Crane, or excuse me, Karen. And, and how long did it take them? Not that that's going to be the situation here, but just to get a better idea of what was the norm, how many times did they meet, and how, many, uh, how long did they actually take to come up with a, a decision? I, I think the first time in 2007, the, uh, the committee met a number of times. Um, I don't have the exact number, but it was, it was quite a few. I think the last time around, it was maybe three or four meetings, and it's really uh, up to you to determine what you know what you want to do. Um, I think the the 2007 com committee may have uh, um, gotten some quite a bit of public input, uh, you know, taken meetings out uh, around. But um, that's really up to you. Uh, you. You can request information and consider what you want. If you want to set up a, a, a regular meeting schedule, you can do that. You can also c uh, have special meetings if necessary. And as as the um, need arises, will this committee be required to do community outreach? I don't think it's a requirement. It's up to you. Well, I'd like to recommend that we meet twice a month, which would put us at about six meetings, and then, if necessary, we could have more. And yes. and if you find that you don't have. Um, in, what you need for a scheduled meeting, those meetings can also be canceled. You know, it, as, you, as you go along, you'll find what, you know, what you might need. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good idea to have a, a regular meeting schedule, and then you can adjust that as necessary. May I, can I um, say that because I believe our deadline is August the 1st, so it would be maybe a total of four meetings, June, another meeting in June, and possibly one or two meetings in July. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted any supplemental information to help in our consideration of our decision, would that information be provided only during meeting times, or would we be provided that information beforehand so we could independently consider it and then bring that information? The meeting, the, the uh, material can be provided ahead of time. It would then be available to the, the public as well. So as long as it's distributed and, and made available, it can be provided ahead of time. So do we want to, let's see, June 19th? Monday. I was going to propose first, first and third Mondays, or no? So we can kind of keep it first. scheduled. First would be today, and then third would be the June 19th? Right. Okay. Does that work for everyone? June 19th is a, our second meeting in June? Yes, that works for me. Yes? It works for me. Wednesdays are my bad days. Okay. Monday okay. the 19th? Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with okay. the 19th. And then in July, we're looking at two dates. The first one is the 3rd, which is on the 4th of July holiday. So mm. the 10th, does that? July 10th? That is good. All right. We're staying, are we still considering or keeping it at the 5 o'clock hour? Or we're not that's talking about For us hours. to decide, does that work for everyone or? I didn't know if we were. Okay. 5 o'clock is um, 
kind of tight for me because Mondays is when I do my my Marion gig, and I get off at 4:30, and I'm coming from Norwalk. So make it 6 p.m. Make it for 5:30. That's fine for with 530 6 p.m. 6 that too late for you, sir. No, I mean 6 p.m. would be good. No, he frowned. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. Definitely. I'm fine. Either way, 530, 6 o'clock. Okay, so 6 o'clock on our July will be July 10th, which is a Monday. And then if we go back to the third um, Monday, it just would be the following week, July 17th, to be consistent. Does that work for everyone? That works. Wait, we're July 3rd or July 10th? Well, we talked about the first and the third Monday, but the first Monday in July is a 4th of July holiday. Uh -huh. So we're going to do the 10th? And, and then 17th. the 17th. Okay. 6 o'clock as, as well to come, and then... If we, need additional. we might need one additional meeting before the August 1st um, date, and so we can decide that at a later time. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Ma Madam Chair, all meetings will be at 6 p.m., beginning at 6 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Can I suggest that you schedule, a, if you would like or anticipate needing an additional meeting at the very end, schedule one last regular meeting on July 31st. That always can be canceled if the work is already done, but that's the day before the deadline that gives you that last day. As I appreciate meeting. that yeah. suggestion. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yes. I, so the last uh, meeting will be July 31st, 6 p.m., also on Monday. If needed, right? Yes. And that was 619. Okay, so just to confirm, this committee will meet on June 19th, July 10th, July 17th, and July 31st at 6 p.m. on each day. Thank you. All up here? Yep. All of the meetings would be here? Yes. yes. I, I had one last question for council. Uh, just, just for a uh, point of information uh, or clarification, uh, for this particular body, um, I, I've served on, on a few boards, but uh, so I just want to get a little bit of clarification. So, for this particular body, is the decision or determination based on uh, the majority of the body or? Uh, or the majority of those present? You need four votes to act um, final so on anything. The body. You have the body entire. As a whole. Right. Correct. Okay. Sorry, I just. Absolutely. That's how my, <laughs> my mind works. Okay. Thank you. Do we want to go on to agenda item five? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready? Item five is discussion of future agenda items. Did you want to add? Oh, okay. May I? Yes, please. Well, one of the uh, items I wanted to kind of uh, get more information on uh, from staff was, uh, and I think we, we've discussed it, many of us, was uh, getting uh, the salary and, and benefits details of uh, everything from, say, our local state uh, senator, state assembly member, county supervisor, just as, as Mr., I think it was Mr. Crane, uh, had delineated uh, or had given uh, details on, uh, but a little bit more in detail uh, for all of us to, to, to consider and, and really jump in it uh, and uh, start having that dialogue on. Uh, thank you, yes. I also, any other agenda items that you... Yes, I would like to know the, the approximate uh, number of staff positions that each board member is allotted and, and their kind of salary. I think that might be public information as far as the salaries according to the positions in each uh, board member's office as well. Any other agenda items that you'd like to? So when um, all of the work that was done by the, the first committee um, I guess some of what is being asked for is just like an update, really, 
um, of that information because they delved into the, the comparisons of other jurisdictions and, and the like. And so w without having to do a whole new deep dive, it, it, is it possible to like update some of that? It may already be on hand, you know, the, the, the comparisons with the different jurisdictions. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Any other agenda items? Ms. Spears? No. no. Okay. So one item that I would like is um, I appreciated having former school board members here today. Um, and appreciated your time to come and testify for one minute. I would love to be able to have you come again if you are open to it at one of our future meetings uh, because we'd really want to get a, a full understanding of the kind of commitment and um, the hours, the community hours, everything. You know, you, you shared a lot within a minute, but I think it would benefit this committee to really get a sense for the kind of um, hours that you put into this. And so if you're open that, we would love to invite you to return. Thank you. And uh, can I just add to that? Kind of hours meaning uh, not just when you attended meetings, but your off hours. Uh, <laughs> after, after meeting hours that you put it, yes. In the market, in the. Because <laughs> I know you can't just do this when you attend the meetings. You, you've got to be doing some research uh, when you're not at a meeting. So that would be included in those hours yeah. that, that she's speaking of, for me anyway. And then one thing that I'd like to see is I noticed in one of the reports uh, the 2012 commission decided to stay uh, mm -hmm. the same as 2007. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious uh, to get a little bit of background on that. Oh, that reminds me, I did have a question. They, they did say that they wanted it to remain this, the same, and I think it mentioned because of budget constraint, constraints. I think that's what it, the, the, the whereas is and what Forrest said. But Mr. Crane, I would like to know um, the current stat, status of, of the budget now. Can the, can the budget support an increase? Madam Chair? Uh, if I would like to make a request um, uh, to probably get the um, the last set of minutes of their last meeting from that particular uh, uh, year, just so that it can give us a better uh, scope of, of what they were thinking and, and how they came up with that conclusion. Perfect. I think that's a good idea. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I think we have a, a good list of uh, agenda items to consider for our next sessions. I appreciate everyone attending. I look forward to serving with all of you. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.